risky and things your perfect mixer Football may not have come home last weekend, but this week the whiskey certainly will as we taste the Cotswolds Peated Cask Single Malt English Whiskey. And we take a look at a couple of news stories from the wider world of whiskey in everyone's favourite segment, Booze, Booze Round. As always, you can feast your eyes, ears and other orifices is, is, <laughs> on more whiskey-based content, pictures and video clips, etc. On all our whiskey social media whiskey platforms at Whiskey and Things Podcast on Whiskey Instagram and at Whiskey and Things on Whiskey Facebook and Twitter Whiskey. I think the word you were looking for was orify. Anyway, it would help us out if you rate, <laughs> review and subscribe on all your favourite podcast platforms. All of them. I know you don't have... I know you have more than one. I know you do. You're listening to Whiskey and Things with Nick Kent and Dave Giles. Welcome to episode 70... I'm Dave Giles. And I'm Nick Kent. 7-0. 7 70. and 0. We're that's getting old, Nick. Nil. We're getting old. Yes, we are. We're not <laughs> 70 yet. Nearly 40. <laughs> Midlife crisis. What did I do? Buy whiskey. Yeah, um, good, guess, I, I think that's a good one. Yeah, it's not too bad, is it? It's like a midlife crisis guy, go? Pretty good. Crises? Crisis. Crises. Yeah, what is the, uh, what is the plural of the word? Crisis. I would go with crises. Crises, yeah. Yeah. Like Brilliant. it. Yeah. I feel um, like a pirate out on the crises. Very good. Um, <laughs> we recorded our 75th episode yesterday. With we did. of patrons, didn't we? It's fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. Um, Thanks very much for joining us, everyone who joined us. Yes. Uh, that'll be out on the 25th of August, everyone. If you want to have a little listen to that. It was Fine quite fun. Ahead. Yeah. Was that a month? Yeah. Know. Mate, yeah. the Olympics starts on Friday. Can't I, wait. I haven't seen much about it, to be honest. I've just heard today that it's like starting soon. I was like, oh yeah. Don't know what kind of event that's going to be. But uh, good luck to all of Team GB. Yes. Oh, mate, yeah. I'm so excited. You are? I love the, I love the Olympics. And it's all going to be early in the morning because it's in Japan, right? Mm, yeah, I guess so. So I can <laughs> wake up, watch it all in bed, and then go around my day. Like It's, it's perfect. It's amazing. Yeah. Wake up at the crack of noon. Yeah, Get exactly. <laughs> my favourite day, my favourite time of day, the crack of noon. Uh, yeah. So anyway, how you doing, buddy? I mean, I, was, I know we spoke yesterday, so it doesn't feel like since yesterday. Yeah. Up on. I'm still as warm as I was yesterday. Yeah, it's very um, warm. Very warm. It's a little bit warm. It's a bit George Michael. It certainly is. Yeah. But uh, let's call ourselves down with a nice, warm, straight whiskey, shall we? Um, yeah. Yesterday, because we did a bourbon for number seventy-five. We made old fashions, which, which was nice, amazing, nice and cooling. It was yeah. great. But today we're doing a we're doing a single malt, as we said in the intro from the Cotswolds. So that needs to be done straight, really. Or oh, whatever, you can do it however you want. Drink it however you like, people. But, yeah. Uh, do you remember we when we that, had? Hang on. Do you remember when we had Jay Bradley on though, and he was talking about doing old fashions with smoky whiskey? Hmm. I've still not done that. Really? Yeah. I still think I need to try that. Funny enough, we spoke to Jay Bradley the last time we did the Cotswolds. So 10, I think it was. That's a complete coincidence. Complete coincidence. I had no idea. I only knew that because I listened to it earlier to see what I'd covered in uh, the last time we did the Cotswolds. Mm, so yeah, I'm going to pour a bit of this whiskey and then we're going to do our first segment, which yeah, is so everyone's favourite segment. Hang on a moment, hang on a moment. Do you want to tell people what this whiskey is? Because I don't think you just named it, did you? Did I cut across you? Well, we did say it was the Cotswolds and we said it in the intro as well. But yes, we're doing oh, the... Yeah, of course. Well, I was about to pour it and then say what it is. But uh, it's all good. It's all good. Can you tell we've done two in a row? A bit yeah. tired. <laughs> so, yeah. We're going to pour now some Cotswolds English Single Malt Whiskey, the peated cask, at a whopping 60.2 ABV. Oof. Good Lord. Yeah. Oof. Well, Pouring I normally prefer the stronger ones, so I'm excited by this. And I remember loving the Cotswolds, the, the standard what we do. So, yeah. yeah. I've poured mine. Thanks for sending a sample, Nick. Very welcome. Yeah, it smells good. Right, so, yeah, everyone's favourite segment, Nick. You know it, I know it, the listeners know it, they know exactly what's coming now. That's right. It's Booze Round. Seamless. Absolutely seamless. What professionals we are. Yeah, a couple of stories in Booze Round this week. Which one do you want to take, Dave? Oh, well, shall I go first? Yeah, you go first. All right, number one. Story number one in Booze Round. Nick Neen. 
The distillery up in Scotland, who we spoke to, you remember, Nick, do you remember what episode it was? We spoke to uh, the founder, Annabelle. It was 57, I believe. It was. It was episode yes. 57. Yeah. Because I remember it being a Heinz variety. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> Nick Neen have uh, sent us a press release about what's been going on there. Look at so, that. So we're like a proper news round. Proper I know, booze round. Right? We've got a press I release, know. and now we're regurgitating that press release. I, like yeah. proper people. Like yeah. it's the BBC or something. Well, in fact, I think journalists would rewrite it, but but like, a proper journalist would rewrite it. But we're we're I, not proper journalists. We're whiskey I've, drinkers. I put it all so, in quotations. Yeah, okay. exactly. So, <laughs> open quotation marks. The independent <laughs> Scottish distillery Nick Neen has become the first in the UK to reach net zero emissions for production, beating the Scotch whisky industry target of 2040 by 20 years. Well. 19 years. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. But, you know, it's a quote, anyway, so I left a 20-year behind. It. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Nick Neen founder Annabelle Thomas said, more quotation marks, this feels like our greatest achievement so far. From the moment we started out on this adventure, there have been plenty of people who told us that using renewable energy would be too hard and that organic barley would be impossible to work with. Many even said that a 100% recycled glass bottle just wasn't the done thing in premium spirits. I'm incredibly proud of our small team who have put their hearts and souls into overcoming all these barriers to create a delicious whiskey with the lowest possible footprint and 20 years ahead of the industry's target. Closed quotation marks. <laughs> uh, Close both quotation marks. This is now Dave speaking. Um, you can hear our Hi, interview Dave. with, with Nick Neen founder Animal Thomas back in episode 57, as I just said. Yeah. And of course, there's more information. They've, uh, they've got a blog about this, uh, nickneen.com. Blogs. It's not on their blog yet, but I'm sure it will be. But it, you can find a bit about it on their Instagram, which I'll link yeah, as well. There you go. But, uh, there you go. But that's good news, isn't it? And I've put a little diagram there, Dave. I know how much you love a pie chart. Mate, I love a pie chart. But they, they've broken it down in the pie chart to where in the, the carbon footprint comes from. So like 29% comes from haulage. Just haulage. Just, you know, transporting that stuff around. Yeah, that makes sense. 13 packaging. I like the 8% other bits and bobs. I yeah, thought that was I, I, a good way of putting it. But they've taken this, like, 3% staff travel. Like, everything's there. Everything's there, yeah. Absolutely everything. Love that. Yeah, it's great. I don't understand the KG's CO per bottle and stuff. I don't know how much that is. But they've got a bit, a little bit here that says um, um, their emissions add up to 267.5 tonnes of CO2 each year. This might sound a lot, but in fact, it's tiny, so small that our footprint is less than one return plane's journey from London to New York. Depends on the plane, surely. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't know much about aviation. But uh, if they say it's tiny, then that's that's good. And then, yeah, it's great. So yeah, um, they've shown everyone else in the industry that it can be done. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing. And we've tried that whiskey. It's good. It is good. And it's I look good. forward to in the Seeing what future. else they come up with. Yeah, some older stuff, whatever they're going to do. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. So they are quite new. So, yeah, brilliant. So, well done, them. Well done, Nick Nian. Something else? Yeah, go on, Nick. Give me something. What you got? An entire distillery has been shipped to China, Dave. What? It's been shipped from Scotland to China this Friday. Um, Why? More than 35 tonnes of equipment, including stills, flooring, control valves, and pipe work. Everyone loves a bit of pipe work. Oh, I do love it. It's leaving pipework. Bucky in Moray for the port of Tianjin. This Friday? Might be last Friday. I think it's this Friday. Because that's very important that you people know when it comes. Oh, absolutely. Because you want to go right, see I, it yeah. off. No, Do you want to go see this off? I wish I could, mate. I wish yeah. I could. <laughs> Got two gigs on Friday. Yeah. Damn. No, oh, mate. Never mind. Um, the Next equipment time. will be assembled at the facility being built in Inner Mongolia, of all places. Um, the shipment is part of a three million pound design and build deal signed between Forfar firm Valentine <laughs> International and China's Ming Tai Group back in 2019. And the facility in Ordus will become Inner Mongolia's first whiskey distillery when it opens, probably at the end of the year. Mongolian whiskey, Dave. Oh my god, amazing! So, yeah, that's cool. So, we've got a what? Wait three years for that? Well, I don't know. What they rules yeah, so, in Mongolia? Sorry for laughing for... when when you said four far. It just reminds me of that great football match when four far played East Fife and it was four three. <laughs> okay. I wasn't aware of that historical fact. Four uh, five four, East Fife three. Um, <laughs> it's nice. just one of those great. Yeah, that's good. Anyway, sorry, carry on. Four candles. Um, yeah. 
Yes, why are they doing this? Well, Valentine International Chairman and Managing Director David Valentine said the product was the brainchild of Meng Tai Chairman Al Feng Ting, who planned to create a globally award-winning whiskey. Um, Mr. Valentine, who specialises in establishing commercial ventures in China, said Scotland is the home of whiskey and has the greatest expertise in terms of distillery equipment manufacture, which is why Mr. Feng Ting believes we will deliver a world-beating project for him in Ordos. This is crazy. This is crazy. See, I'm really sceptical about this, because equipment doesn't mean you're going to make good whiskey. No, it's been made by... A good company like um, Cotswolds, who we're t- who we're looking at today, it's the same people who built their stills and all their equipment um, in their distillery. But uh, again, Nick, I, I can buy make- a decent guitar, and it doesn't mean I can play it. You see my point? Yeah. You're struggling not to make a joke there. I've I know heard your point. <laughs> <laughs> I was very restrained. You but were. No, you, you were. were you, right. could, you could see you that. Right. The, you could see the jokes were coming out of your ears, <laughs> leaving Cogs your paws. Yeah. yeah, it was like, don't, 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 no, don't, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to lower myself to that, um, but no, you're right. But um, yeah, we'll see whether we'll, they yeah, get I mean, someone with the know-how to go do it, absolutely. or whether they try it themselves. But you know, good for them. Fantastic. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it just just the smells of them spending a lot of money on something that may not work. And fair enough. We'll see. Well, we'll hopefully taste the uh, the results of that in a few years. But um, the if you want to read the full story, I'll put the link to that. That was a BBC News story, that one. So uh, reliable. B- BBC. Nice and reliable. But yes, and the link to uh, all our Booze Round stories, all two of them will be in the links. Below, wherever you listen to your podcasts. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me, Dave? Just, just smiling. <laughs> Having a good time. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what we got this for you this week on... All right, so Nick's very kindly broke this in big letters for me because I keep forgetting to do it. So... Yep. This week's whiskey. What we got, Nick? Cotswold's Peated Cask Single Malt English Whiskey. Um, it's been 11 weeks since we've last done an English whiskey, which isn't that long. Um, yeah, so episode 59, we tried the Bimba Club edition with Anthony and Nikki from New Dram Drinker, um, yes. which was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, that was uh, yeah. a good episode. Doesn't was. seem like 11 weeks ago, though. That seems like yesterday. Jeez. Yeah, these are flying by, aren't they? Um, Before that, we did episode 50 back in March. We had Abby and Chris from Cooper King on the show and we sampled their new make. And then before that, yeah, we did the Bimber, episode 27. And we also did the standard single malt Cotswolds back in episode 10, May 2020. Good Lord, that was a long time ago. But yes, today we're doing the the peated cask version. This was a present from my brother, Paul, for my birthday. Oh, cheers, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Look at that. So... Peated cask, and it's sixty point two percent ABV. I mean, that's it's not crazy, a cask. It? It's not a cask strength either. So I think it's no. mad. It, yeah. What? Yeah, this isn't cask strength. So it's even watered down to that level. Yeah. Well, added a drop in. <laughs> Let's add a drop of water in. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I, lo- I looked this up because I wanted to find out. I, yeah, I don't think it's cask strength, but they dilute it to sixty three point five before putting it in the casks. Um, ABV does go down in Scotland with maturation, but they haven't watered it down much if they have. 60.2. We've got a car strength. I checked it to the red breast car strength down there, and that's only 59 or something. What's this? 57.6, the red breast single pot car strength, 12 year old. Nuts. Anyway, yes, this is a whopping ABV. Did you know there's 33 distilleries in England now? Yeah, I saw that recently, actually. I saw that Cooper King updated their English whiskey map. They did. Uh, and and uh, added some new ones in, which is yeah, fun. Which is a lot of fun. Um, probably a little small ones, but it's all good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cotswolds Distillery was founded in 2014, and um, they also make gins and vermouth and cream liqueurs and bitters and all kinds of things. Interestingly, in the initial development for the distillery was assisted by Harry Coburn, who was a master distiller and former production director for, for Bowmore, which is cool, and Dr. Nice. Jim Swan 
whose previous projects include Penderin. He was an expert in cask maturation, etc. Nice. They're doing things properly. Um, the barley is floor malted traditionally um, locally at Warminster, Britain's oldest working maltings in operation. They've been going wow. since yeah, eighteen fifty five of all things. They didn't actually plan. I read this from their website earlier. So quotation marks, everyone. Um, we had never planned to make a peated whiskey, the method of which traditionally is peat smoking the grain during the kilning process. And peat is not native to the Cotswolds. So uh, that's why they're not doing, you know, they didn't want to do a peated one because they didn't, they wanted to do a locally, local locally character whiskey. Locally flavour. Yeah. Yeah, which is what we like. But they went with the peated cask instead. And oh, I see. So he puts, yes. they put it in that. Is that a finishing job or did it do full, full term? Full maturation. Um, oh, wow. Which of how long? I'm guessing three or four years. I think it's three or four years. And as well, I think that I'm pretty sure the cask would have come from Lefroy because they do their quarter cask and apparently they have loads. Right. Um, so you keep seeing these peated cask expressions coming from companies. You know, they've, they've only said it's from a heavily peated Isla distillery. I'm pretty right. sure it's going to be Lefroy. I think Bimba's done the same thing as well. So qu- quarter um, cask, how many litres is that, Nick? 125, which is pretty small. That's the thing. They are kind of small casks, so they do affect the maturation pretty quickly if you look at um, other ones for example an american standard barrel is 200 that's what you're going to get with your ex-bourbon casks mm. and um, a sherry butt is 500 liters so you get the idea of how much smaller these ones are and they also kind of rebuilt them i think so like they t- took the staves apart and rebuilt them so they're more of a cigar shape um as well which is uh, interesting quite, quite interesting i'd be interested to look at one of those to be honest but uh yeah there we go well, what, what do you think about it then? I mean, is it lim- is it a limited? I'm guessing, like, because a lot of the other English whiskies are all quite limited at this point, aren't they? I think it's a core range, but it is done in batches. Um, right, it's 2,950 in the batch. Um, okay, so f- yeah, fairly limited. I'm guessing there'll be some variation from batch to batch as well, which is fun. Yeah. Um, well, I actually enough, like that, Nick. I like that. I like that from one batch to the next, it's going to be slightly different. And well, I think the ABV is slightly different. Oh, I've interesting. Because this one's obviously, I've said this 60.2. Now the one on their website they're selling, the ABV has gone down to 59.6. Which interesting. Is, is interesting. So they've lost 0.6 of an ABV. Well, if an ABV. as long as they're doing it, if they're doing it for, for flavour reasons, then that's great, isn't it? Yes, because I've had some of this and it's very pokey. Do you have any water on hand, Dave? I don't. And I just had a sip and I was like, I'm going to have to go and get some water on it. Okay. I? Go so, and take um, it, have a second. Go and take. Go and get some water. I will do. You can admire my lovely shorts. Good lord! You're listening to the Whiskey and Things podcast. So, Nick, before we we experiment any further with this, what do you mean by pokey? For me, it's just quite well strong. Like it might blow your head off. You right. know, it's, like I use the term pokey for a, 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 a powerful car as well. If you put too much gas, it's going to spin out of control. You know, there's a lot of power in it, but a lot of oomph, right. pokey, a lot of oomph to it. That's what I think is pokey, unless I've got that completely wrong. Yeah, because pokey um, seems like a delicate poke rather than a blowing your head off. I think Billy Abbott used it. That's where I got it from. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, he said it's a bit pokey. Yeah, so that's where I've picked it up from. So fair enough. I, trust, I should have I questioned him, Abbott. shouldn't I? And next, time, p- next time he says that to us, I'll be like, Billy, what do you mean? Pretty sure he did. But anyway, yeah, so this is quite strong. And my first sip, it, it does burn. There's a burn there. For me, it's, it's too strong for me to sip casually. I've, I've needed to put quite a lot of water in earlier on. Even on the nose, that made my eye water. Yeah, there's a lot like, going on. There's a lot going on there. Ooh. It is citrusy on the nose. Yeah, Lemon sherbet. You just lemon don't need sherbet. to get your nose in there too much, do you? No, no, yeah, no, no, the, no. Oh, lemon sherbet is a great shout. Yeah, bit of dried fruit, like fruitcake. But, I um, can't get I can't get away from the lemon sherbet now you said it. Lemon sherbet. <laughs> I'll pour a little bit more. So I'm gonna put some water in this now. Um yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna with water it opens right up and there's a lot going on. How how much, Nick? Are we talking a couple of drops or um I put quite a lot in. Um up to you. You might want to build it up, but I put about I think I put like three mil in or something. But then I was using a different glass earlier. But um so yeah, a bit of experimentation needed. Oh, yes. But you drop it in and you can see how, you can see the oils in there and stuff. Yeah, exactly. I was just about to say that. Separating out yeah. all over the place. It's very pretty when you drop the water in. Let it settle. It's quite a light whiskey. Let's talk about the colour before we... Well, it's not a light light. It's uh Fairly light. Fairly light. 
<laughs> so scientific on this show. It's fairly light. Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it with the water. Not gonna yeah. lie. More value for money as well. It's like think about this earlier. It's just like whiskey squash. You know, it's add water to taste with the strong stuff. Yeah, no, I I agree. I I mean, I really like their standard bottle. Yes, we did like it, didn't we? I haven't had it for a while, but uh, I'm um, enjoying it. And and I'm not necessarily a peat head, so oh. I don't think I would buy this. I'm not getting much peat from this, to be honest. It's for me, it's not a medicinal peat. It's a slight smoke on the palate. Once I've added all the uh, all the water and stuff, it's a slight smoke, but it's not that medicinal peat for me. I think it's quite subtle. Are you getting quite more? I'm, I'm getting, getting a bit quite more? a lot. I'll you be get, honest. I'm getting yeah. a fair amount in there. It gets sweeter when the water goes in. Yeah, I agree and, with uh, that. Apricots and orchard fruits and stuff. But yeah, the sweetness does come out. It does have a long finish. Um, for me, the smoke comes out at the end of the finish as well, when uh, the tannin kind of dries out as well. Um, quite a bit of tannin in there. I put quite a lot of water. Still a bit yeah, of burn. I'm going to try, try, try a little bit more, actually. Yeah. Why not? I don't think I've ever put this much water into a whiskey. Isn't a bad thing. Still yeah, I'm still, get, I'm still getting a fair amount of peat and the medicinal side of things. It's still it's still there for me. And as I've spoke, I, it doesn't offend me. I don't not like it. I just rather, I prefer other kinds of whiskies. Hmm. Um, so to me, there's a bit too much of that in there. And I'm not... The smell is great. Flavor wise, isn't necessarily my cup of tea, right. uh, and I imagine it's fairly expensive. What? Well, probably not actually in whiskey terms. What? Seventy quid? Sixty four ninety five on their oh, shop. Wasn't, wasn't a zillion miles not far off. off. No, uh, whiskey exchanged it for sixty two ninety five. So yeah, okay. it's a it's a quality pair of jeans, I'd say. Yeah, but if you're going to water it. it down, then it's going to last a fair amount, which is good. Yep. Uh, if you like, I think if people like peat, they're going to enjoy this. Yeah. Um, or I think it's a subtle peat. So, you know, I don't think it's a, it's not like, again, it's a peated cask, not peated grain. So, you know, it's not in the same ballpark as the Lagavulins and the Freud's, oh, no, et cetera. I, I, absolutely. And, and, but it's still there. It's, it's potentially a good introduction to peat, but it's yeah. an expensive introduction to peat. <laughs> yeah. But if you you know, if you've got a bottle on the shelf and you're and someone someone says I've never had a peaty whiskey, you can give them this and they'll get an idea perhaps. Mm, yeah. Before before you go uh and pull out the big boys. Yeah. Uh the distillers describe this as a smoky vanilla ice cream. Is uh All right, let me let me see if I'm getting any of that. <laughs> the thing about when you add water to a high percentage whiskey, I do like the creamy texture. Right. I, I do like gonna, that. Are you, you losing it or you're gaining no, that? No, no, I think you gain that. I think it right. becomes a bit, yeah, just creamier. It coats the mouth better. And I like that. It's like, it feels like hmm, you're drinking the equivalent of putting a moisturizer on your skin. Not not flavor wise, but you know, after you put moisturizer on your skin and it's all smooth. That's, mm. that's how I feel like my tongue feels after I've had a high ABV spirit <laughs> with a bit of water in it. <laughs> So it's a bit like a pampering for your mouth. Is that what yeah, you're exactly. Which is really pleasant. Which is really pleasant. And, and yeah, so I like that. Um, I like that a lot. Cotswolds, a pampering for your mouth. Yes. <laughs> or any high <laughs> ABV with water. You're listening to Whiskey and Things. These British people talk funny. But yeah, wow. I feel like we need to go and visit this place because everyone's telling me it's amazing to go and visit. Well, funny you should say that, Dave. Oh, yeah. I've got, yes, I've been planning our visit today because I think oh, this yeah. is halfway between us, right? Yeah. Halfway between Manchester and London, kind of. The Cotswolds Distillery Visitor Centre Shop and Cafe, right? Nearest travel lodge is 13 miles away. It's too far. It's too far. But there's a campsite, four minutes drive, which I think is a good little walk, I think. I've got a tent. So you've got a tent. I'll probably use my I've own. I've got a tent. Not going to lie. Big tent. Um, so yeah, I reckon we go do the camping thing. There's a pub up the road as well for the evening once it's shut. And oh mate, that's a do- great shout. That's yeah. such a great shout. Four minutes drive away. Well, of course they're going to be like 20 minute walk if that, yeah. you know, along a country road from the distillery. Probably a bit you know, more than that. Maybe a bit more. Well, yeah, we'll be weaving on the way back. Uh, no. But yes, I think that's the one. I think we need to do it in the summer months. Camping. Yes. I think, mate, I think it's a great idea. Have your own tent. Oh, I've got a big one. 
Loads of space in there. Yeah, well, it depends how hot it's going to be. We'll have a barbecue. <gasps> oh, oh, we can do a barbecue. Oh, whiskey and barbecue. What can go Bye. better? Uh, exactly. Exactly. Bit of sunshine, bit of barbecue. Cheers. Oh. Oh. Well, that's a plan then. Job done. Should we see if Danny wants to come? No. <laughs> <laughs> no no other friends allowed. <laughs> just me and you, Dave. Just, just me and just, you. Just you and I. <laughs> what is that? Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah. uh, so I have a bottle of the Distiller Select that I haven't opened as well. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, we've got that to try. But I'm sure when we get there, there'll probably be some distillery exclusives as well. I would hope there would be something there, yeah. What's the damage on the distillery select? I can't remember, mate. Because this was, what, 64 quid. The original single malt is 39. So if you prefer that, then that's a winner for you, Dave. Uh, sorry, it's the founder's choice. Oh. It's not the distiller select. It's the founder's choice. And it was 62 pounds wow. on the whiskey exchange. And that's also a strong one. It's 60.5. Right. Um, they like the really, high ABVs, don't they? I, I, yeah, I love a high ABV, though. But, yeah, this the, the, the founder's choice is um, matured exclusively in shaved, toasted, and recharred American oak red wine barriques. Ah. So that's got a bit of me all over it, I think. Um, yeah, I think the original uh, one was red wine cast as well. Yeah, I think we had the founder's choice when we did the tasting. One of the... It was in the English... Um, that would make sense. Yeah. English whiskey tasting set when we uh, were at the whiskey show last year. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Oh, there we go. I yeah. remember liking everything I've, I've had of Cotswolds. That's good. Yeah. And and this is great. Sorry if I sound deflated about it. I'm I'm just not a massive peat head. And it's subtle enough, but I just think if you're going to go peat, go peat. And, and, I'm getting and, more fruit than peat on I'm this really one. not. It's really mm. weird. I like the creaminess. Maybe my old factory's still messed up from the, the bout of COVID. But uh, I'm enjoying it, wherever. wherever I, I, yeah, like. I mean, I I am enjoying it. Uh, I think it's a good whiskey. I think if people want to want to get this, it is subtle. As you say, it's still a subtle peat, but it's a peaty enough. So if you want a subtle peat with a bit of fruitiness in there, smells of lemon sherbet, and and it, there is a it's a long finish as well. It's a really yeah, long finish. It's a very long finish. I'm struggling to pick out flavors. I'll be honest. I'm struggling to pick out anything that reminds me of anything other than it tastes like a peated whiskey. Mm. Um, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, it's just today I don't have anything insightful to give you. But yeah. it, it, well, it like does have... Well, I to it right down in order to get the apricots and the sweetness and all that kind of stuff. Um, depends, if, yeah, how much water you put in. Or, again, everyone's different. Everyone's different. <sighs> Warm day too. Oh, that's got to have something to do with it. That might be, that might be, do you know what, Nick? Maybe next week, if the weather is still, have we got next week's show planned? Nope. If the weather is still good, <laughs> why don't we do a refreshing whiskey show? I don't know what that means, but how to drink whiskey and make it refreshing, which will mean probably cocktails or something like that. Yeah, but, yeah it's going to be highballs and stuff. Well, no, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you want to do all the research for that one? No, I want you to. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> just tell me what ingredients to get and I'll get them in okie dokie look well, forward to that everyone um, <laughs> oh well the weather might turn mate it might yeah. might be awful next week I mean that's the thing I mean we've we, we, we were drinking countries and knocking them out the Euros so if we decide to do a a good weather good weather podcast we'll probably ruin the heat wave for everyone yeah true well, I live in Manchester as well so this isn't going to last this, uh, yeah. this weather bound to rain bound to rain bound to rain so, so anyway what's, What's your uh, our overarching thoughts on this Cotswold Peaty cast then? I'm enjoying it. I need a lot of water in it though. It's it's very strong. Very strong for me. But And it's not as smooth as other cast strength stuff. It's not even cast strength, but things yeah. of this ABV. And again, smooth is a weird term. But um, the, yeah, for me, I've had to put a lot of water in it. But that's good because it still tastes nice when I've watered it down and I get more out of the bottle. But yeah, I'm enjoying the fruitiness and the subtle Peaty. Because we know I like a peat. Yeah, you do like a peat. So, yeah, that makes sense. All right, cool. Well, there thanks we for go. sending me the sample, Nick. I've enjoyed this. Very welcome. Very uh, welcome. And, and uh, yeah, if anyone, any of our listeners have tried it, please send over their opinions. Yeah. Cotswolds, single malt, peated cask, English whiskey. You're listening to Whiskey and Things.
Right, Nick, I am absolutely roasting, so can we wrap this up as soon as we can? Ugh, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, listeners, yeah. it may seem like we're, we're half arsed today, but we're not. We're just melting. We are melting like an ice cube in your favourite old-fashioned on a warm Ugh. summer's day. That is what Nick and I look like. We are swimming around in, in a sea of uh, bitters and sugar syrup and <laughs> bourbon whiskey. <laughs> Dave's waving his arms around while as he's doing I'm, this. As if I'm floating like around. <laughs> as if I'm actually the ice cube. Come on, get, in, get into the game, Nick. Get into the game. I'm sorry. <laughs> Drama wasn't my uh, my forte. As you could tell, Nick, it was definitely mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you lost me. I thought you were an ice cube. <laughs> yes. Anyway. anyway, listeners and Nicholas, I hope you have a wonderful week. You the angels too. have had their share. And so have I, of you. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers. Thanks Thanks for for coming. Whiskey and Things has been brought to you by And Things Productions.